Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening to all the participants today. I would like to welcome you all to an another wonderful session by an extremely knowledgeable speaker, Dr. Chako Chen, on the topic Franchising the Right Way. To give you a small brief about Dr. Chako Chen, he is a CEO and founder of Franchising Right Way. He is a management consultant and a psychologist with over 28 years of rich experience in the franchising business world. A veteran uh, in business and franchising coach who has worked with more than 850 successful entrepreneurs through the franchising format. He has been recognized for shaping the franchising business in various brands in India. He has contributed to various forums. He's a business strategist with the principle of execution uh, and uh, excellence. His educational qualifications are he is a master's of marketing management, MA in advertising and PR, MSc in psychology, MPhil in commerce, and PhD in franchise management. He has a special passion towards mentoring and coaching people and helping businessmen as well as uh, businessmen to cope with their businesses as well as their families. I hope you enjoy the session today. Uh, handing over to you, Dr. Chako Chen. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gibran. And it's wonderful for me to be part of this wonderful event today. And uh, it gives me a great joy to share uh, what I have done for the last 28 years in building franchises. Now, uh, if you're part of this chat and I see about 39 people, uh, if you could use our chat very effectively, if I could know how many of you are businessmen, if you say yes and no, it will help me to understand how many people are already doing business and um, I can prepare my presentation on, on that manner. Can we just take a few minutes? Wonderful, great. I see quite a lot of people who are businessmen uh, in this space, uh, in this webinar, and it gives me a joy to uh, share uh, my experience of working with brands in different uh, locations and different uh, uh, you know places. So I just want to ask, thank you very much. Thank you. I think it's a great, uh, you know, uh, see a lot of people uh, specifying that most of you are businessmen. I'm not sure that what kind of business you are doing, but it's fine. But um, today you will be learning and Jubran has given me a, a big job of talking to uh, all the people uh, in the sense like I, he wanted me to speak to the businessmen how they could franchise the brand. Uh, that is one thing that he has asked me to do. Second thing is he's also asked me to speak on how some of you after this COVID-19 uh, would probably venture into a small business and what kind of business that you could look at. It could be a franchising business that you could look at and how you could be uh, a franchise of different brands. And before you buy a franchise, what are the things that you need to do? So I'm, I'm going to split this into two different uh, halves and see how I could share my knowledge with you all. And uh, this could benefit the community around so i'm going to share my screen and uh, make a run through the presentation for you can you see my screen yes sir. yes sir. okay thank you now um, so i want to share start with by saying what is franchising franchising is the process is the practice of using other firms successful business model to make profit for an investor or an entrepreneur now generally people think that franchising is very easy because we are using other people's money opm we call it as opm other people's money so people think that the best form is to just start a business and uh, franchise it and then we can make money out of it well that's easily said and done. It's not that easy because as a franchisor, you have a lot of things to be done before you get into franchising. So I would like to reiterate the definition of franchising, which I love this definition because uh, a continuing relationship in which a franchisor provides a license to privilege to the franchisee to do business and offers assistance in organizing, training, merchandising, marketing, and managing in return for a monetary consideration. 
duration. Now, this is a perfect uh, definition that I can look up on the on the net and and when i did my phd i found that this is one of the best thing because i practice i was i was a practicing franchise manager and i i felt that this is the best definition so uh, i want to reiterate a continuing relationship now, now a franchise or franchise relationship I'm, I'm not going to talk about that right now because that's a very long subject to talk about a continuing relationship in which a franchise or provides a license privilege to the franchisee to do business and offers assistance in organizing, training, merchandising, marketing, and managing return in a monetary consideration. Now, basically, if you see, uh, all franchises used to have something called the royalty model. But today, businesses are not doing that great. Some of them have taken the royalty model out and they're looking for, for uh, a one-time payment. So there are different types of models which uh, which a company could choose out. So now this now different types of franchising. You you have something called master franchising, area development franchising, joint venture franchising, direct franchising, and regional franchising. Different types of franchising. So you can do a different type. You may be a, a person sitting in Chennai and you want to do. Uh, business in, in 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 some other place so you could you could give a regional franchise and so, so can... let's make it full screen a lot of participants want to see your presentation the full screen uh, uh topmost icon fourth one on the right yeah can you see that yes sir, perfect yeah so ma master franchising area development franchising joint venturing direct franchising and regional franchising so we could look at any of these models which suits the uh, bill you know, maybe you, your products are very good and you can take it to different places. So you can look at different models to make uh, this happen. Now, if you look at the global franchising scenario, there are 33 countries, including the United States, China and Australia, have laws that explicitly regulate franchising, with the majority of all other countries having laws which have a direct or indirect impact on franchising. Now, if you look at India, we don't have a franchising law. That is why you see companies start franchising but they just close the franchise now that's something very sad because the investor uh, or the franchise who's taking a brand loses out money but in other countries all these are protected unless the they have a proven model they would not be able to franchise now that's why you see uh, companies like mcdonald's or uh, kfc uh, they're all doing well because they have a proven model and sometimes in India, these models have also failed because of market conditions. So France, what is franchising in India? India is one of the biggest franchising market because of its large middle class of three, 300 million and because of its entrepreneurial population. Franchising industry is growing at 30 to 35 percent year on year. Now, that's the growth that we are looking at every year. The franchise industry, when I started my career way back in uh, you know, in 1990, we did not have much of franchising businesses. Now, the key franchising companies in those days when you talk about is basically the NITs, the Aptex, the SSIs. Those are the franchising companies which are very popular in those days. The IT was booming at that time and many people invested into the IT businesses. Now, let me give you some breakups of um, what's happening in the industry. You find regional brands which are doing, uh, you know, uh, doing well. 50% of them are regional brands. That means locally. Some of them are global brands that have come to India. And we have about 34% of national brands. Now, if I want to say something about the national brands that we can look at, Raymond's is one. We can, uh, we can talk about uh, TA Cycles. Uh, we can talk about um, uh, Mahindra, Mahindra. Uh, we can talk about the car manufacturing companies. We can talk about the salon industry. We talk about uh, naturals as one of the uh, best, uh, uh, you know, salon, the salon, uh, salon, uh, um, you know, uh, franchise. You can find Green Trends as one of the best uh, in the south. You've had, uh, you know, put together. They have about more than thousand salons uh, that they have opened up. So these are some of the industries that we can see. 
about 1.7 lakh franchisees operating in india 80% franchisees locations are unit franchisees so there's something called unit franchise and multi multi unit franchise so uh, you know unit franchises are basically single franchise multiple brands you know multi multi unit br franchises are also possible so if you have money and i know i i know a particular a brand there's a lady who runs about 10 to 15 stores of her own uh, in in the city of chennai so people that's called multi unit franchise now what is the different industries that are available for franchise if you look at the quick service restaurants are doing very well right now because you find many of them uh, with the dark kitchens and a small location can be identified and then you can do franchise then you have maintenance you know people main, maintaining uh, you know maintenance of different uh, equipments and other, you know for example car uh, maintenances the bike maintenances these are some of the industries that you can look at franchising personal care today uh, you know the beauty industry is growing extremely well and that's a huge investment that could be made in that particular space and uh, you can build uh, a lot of products now organic products uh, you know can you can franchise organic products or even uh, the ayurvedic products uh, you know different kinds of uh, products can on the space of personal care can be brought in now there's another business area which is called the business children's business now, if you look at children's business, you'll find so many, uh, you know, clothing, you know, uh, clothing is one sector that you can look at. Uh, toys is another sector, uh, cycles or play, uh, play things, you know, so there's so many other uh, services that you can look at and you can look at different types of businesses models. So what I'm going to talk, what I'm telling uh, the participants here is that if you have a business and you look at how can I take this to the different locations, it's very easy. Uh, if you already have, a, I'm sure that your community has been doing business for a long time and they have the business acumen and they have the idea, they have products which could be beneficial to different places. Now, instead of having it in one location, you could do take it to different places, which is uh, easily possible through the franchising mode. You look at the retail industry, uh, retail industry like, uh, you know, um, Max uh, or uh, Trends, um uh, you know reliance trends and and so on and so forth all the women brands like biba uh, and so on and so forth you will find so many brands that are coming in you know classic polo is one of the brands that you could look at which has grown very fast uh, uh, recently and we have seen more than 100 200 stores of them in the market now so these are uh, these are possibilities of having a business then business services that could be uh, could be franchise. You'll find uh, the word franchise uh, very very significantly in the hotel and motels. Like you can construct your own uh, buildings and give it for franchise to brands. That is uh, possible. Automotives is another industry that you can look at. Home improvement items, uh, full uh, full service restaurants like dine and dine and restaurants can be put up. Now the upcoming. Uh, a market is the pet care if you see uh, you know location by location pet care is another important uh, you know uh, franchise model that could be uh, that we looked at recreation is another one which we could look at uh, retail food sales and financial services health gyms gymnasiums and uh, and uh, you know aerobic centers could be another opportunity and technology could also become another area for business now i just want to share with you i'm so excited about the franchise the word franchise that you would hear is very very often that you would hear in the last about 7 uh, or 8 years if you if i ask you this question you will always remember ipl how many of you agree to me the word franchise became very famous after the ipl came in now imagine sports being franchised sports is being franchised and uh, people are investing uh, money into fra into into this business now you look at all these opportunities that are there and look at how you could look at an opportunity to into franchise and make this you know model available to people so that you are actually creating uh, you know uh, entrepreneurs uh, ecosystem for entrepreneurs to come in and make money for themselves 
So that's the different segment that I talked about today. And I'm sure you will all understand if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. Maybe Jibran can have a look at all those things and then we can do the Q&A. When we do the Q&A, you can ask me some questions. Now, just to give you some idea about the, the, the brands that are operating here, you see uh, Naturals, you see Green Trends, you see Lakme. These are the beauty salon, Ginny and Johnny. Uh, and then you have, uh, you have Jockey. Jockey is one of the uh, latest addition of um, uh, franchising. You find Jockey being franchised everywhere. So these are some of the brands that you could look at. Uh, the way they have franchised, you could also franchise some of your products and services that you have. Now, education side, if you look at Cat Center, is one of the oldest uh, company in education that have been franchising more than 600 stores that they have across. And I'm I'm really proud to say that I was the I was one of the leading managers for Cat Center, uh, where I did about 350 stores building up for them, and I also worked with Green Trends and uh, and worked about 300 stores for green trends. So uh, and I worked with many entrepreneurs across India from Kashmir to Kanyakumari developing these franchise networks about 850 of them I worked with and uh, food and beverage is another area that you could look at uh, you know play schools you know Euro kids is one uh, very uh, uh, pioneers in the field of uh, uh, kids education, kids is another brand that is there, and there you will find, uh, you know, there are so many kids brands that could be franchised. You also have Mary Brown and McDonald's. Uh, I'm not sure how how Mary Brown is doing at this point of time, but I'm sure McDonald's uh, franchise is available. And uh, these are some of the brands I'm just showing it to you, but uh, you can also look at the web for more. Uh, uh, such brands that are available for franchise or you could also create your own brand and franchise Now let me put this facts before you now if you're going to start your own business uh, a franchise business is 77 percent uh, It will be successful unless The location is bad or the company has wound up the franchise business will be a great business but a non franchise business at 23 percent you know, the success rates are very, very minimal because you need a lot of money, you need a lot of manpower, you need a lot of... So I believe strongly that if you're looking for a small business to be started, you could try out with franchise business and that will give you confidence to look at, uh, look at building your own uh, net, worth, net worth. Now, let me uh, start with how do you build a franchise brand? Now, I saw a lot of people or are, are, are business owners who are part of this particular uh, uh, seminar at this point of time, webinar. And I see that uh, many of you are business owners. And if you have a good business and you have never thought about franchising, you have a beautiful opportunity to franchise at this time. But you may ask me a question, what happens in this COVID time? COVID time, nothing is happening. So don't worry. Just be relaxed. What? Once you come out of COVID, everything is going to be normal. Of course, there will be difficulties, difficulty that we would see, but there will be business happening and you can relook at all your business models. So I want to share my own experiences. Business will not be as normal as possible from now on. Things would change. So therefore, my advice to uh, people are do not go for big sized uh, retail uh, retail space. Retail space is very expensive to do business. Once your rental is going up, the cost of doing business increases. So I always believe a small size store with a good design and good interiors will help you to get your customers. Now, if you personally want to buy, uh, you know, have a big store and you're going to invest into one store, you could look at investing into multiple stores. In the same locality, you could look at different, for example, let's take the, if I'm sure you all must be from Chennai and you know Chennai. So assuming that you're looking at Ananaga, you could do Ananaga West, you could Ananaga East, you could also do Tirumangalam. Instead of investing in one location, you could do three locations and you could find uh, business, uh, you know, shaping up in different locations in a different way. 
So therefore you're covering the market. This is another model that you could tie. So I just want to talk about how do you build a franchise business? Um, now you need to consider there are certain things that you need to uh, consider before you franchise your business. Now, why companies fail? Many, many franchisors fail because when they start, they have good intentions, but they are not able to sustain the model because they have not looked at the model or looked at the processes correctly. So franchising is basically, uh, you know, replicating what you have done in your main store with a process of creating the same thing to be replicated to some other location. But the loca in the location, the customer behaved differently, but that's fine. But giving a structure to the business is very important. So what are your products and the concept that you have? That has to be clearly spelled out with a lot of uh, you know, deliberations that you have and see how you could uh, come out with a unique product or services that you have. Or it could be a common product uh, you know, that others are doing. But how can I be different from others? And what is the USP that I could give it to my customers? Now, what is the business model that you are looking at? Now, for example, um, you know, value propositions. What are the kind of customers that you're looking at? What is the channel that you're going to use? What is the strategic partnership that you're going to look at? What is the cost structure and the revenue streams? This has to be discussed and you need to arrive at a business model. Unless the business model is very uh, lucrative, people would not come to buy a franchise. So we need to look at in those days when we started franchising in those days, people just came and bought because they wanted to be in business. But today you find people are very knowledgeable. They understand franchising uh, in and out. The kind of questions that they would ask, what is my ROI? What is my uh, return on investment? How can I uh, get back my money? In how, so we need to probably show them the proof that my store, which I'm running, is profitable. So therefore, I can share with you my experiences. But, but honestly speaking, each store will, diff, uh, you know, uh, each store will function in a different way. So therefore, we cannot have one model i mean the sense like we we have one model but the res result or the outcome will be different in different places because of the location because of the people but we have a good model we can always showcase our business now we also need to look at the legal uh, requirements for running this business how do you make a, a franchise agreement and what are the things that should come inside that? So we need to uh, safeguard ourselves as well as the franchise. We need to look at both of them and see how we could have a good franchise or a legal system that could protect both the parties. Now, the, I, I just want to share with you my story. I was asked to evaluate a business and somebody a consultant had gone to them and said they have one store for the last 10 years and they were been doing business and somebody went to that 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 person and said hey listen uh, your company can be franchised you have been in this business for last 10 years and uh, so they took some money from them and they said we will we will uh, you know give you a business model now somebody had referred me and i went to look at their model I asked the first question, have you been making money in your business? They said, no, we are, not, we are not able to survive. But somebody has gone and said, you have a good infrastructure, you are having passion, so let's do a, a, you know, a, a business model and sell it to people. The first question that a franchisee would ask you is, are you profitable? Now, when you are not profitable, how can you give me a business saying that i will make money now that's something which you need to think before even you consider to franchise are you profitable can i share my success story with others do i have a process to share now this is very important because of today as i told you 
the franchisees are very smart today before they come and take any business they will ask you a lot of questions for which you need to be prepared to answer now you need to have a good organizational structure and very good departments a franchise department you need probably to have a good franchise department you need to have people uh, who would be part of the logistics department you should have a department for marketing you should have a department for sales you should have a you know department for legal all these are part and parcel of uh, of having a good franchise system but generally people do not have these things and they just start something and then figure out that it's so difficult to run franchise that's why many franchisors close shop and go away but i want to tell you my friends this morning if you are hearing me you need to structure your business in a way with good departments so that the franchisee feels confident to buy your product because you see that department that's the investment that's why i said it's not using other people's money you have to put your money first to build a system and process so that you can showcase that i have invested into the franchising business and that is what i'm going to give it to you so therefore you need to pay me x amount of money you can solidly go and ask but if you're going to say that no 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 uh, as i grow i will be putting up the structures yes i i believe the number of people to be in a department need not be you know uh, too many people but at least you need to have few departments to start with but some of the places i've seen the owner himself will sit and sell but that shows that 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 shows that they don't have a system in place so we need to be very uh, we need to consider the structures of departments that we could we could have at least few departments we should be able to have before we go into franchising we should have a great team i uh, i worked with green, uh, you know green tents and i worked with uh, cat center i worked with nit i worked with aptech i worked with ssi now every company that has that i have seen grow today uh, if i see the educational space cat center is still there in the market even after 28 29 years is because of a great team that they have now if you want to franchise it's important to have a great team with you unless you have a great team we cannot franchise now one of the things that i want to tell you this morning is if you see many companies the franchise the franchise manager keeps changing now you would have spoken to x this month next time next month you want to come and you know call somebody you will find that manager is missing now that is not a good uh, model that is not a good model at all so we need to see how you could how you could create a great team with you you need to build a great team to franchise we need to you need to choose the geography in which you want to work with you need to look at the competitor strategy you need to find what kind of competitors are there in the in the same business that you're doing and what is the strategy that they are adopting and how are they running businesses so you need to study the competitor and a strategy before you get into the business and you need to choose the right partner to do businesses that's very important the key is to look at the right partners to do business now you need to create proper support system which i talked about very important now also you need to create r and d departments you need to be able to you know launch new products for every season for example if you look at max you look at uh, look at uh, trends every season like you you find summer you find winter you you find autumn you they come out with new uh, you know models so you keep that in your mind when you when you are looking for franchise you can't just have the old stale products with you and say that i'm going to sell only this product because the franchisee will start questioning you and asking you questions when is the new products going to come to the market so therefore the franchise or uh, responsibility to look at new products now you need to finally build the brand using the pr you need to use all the medium the digital media space that is currently very active you need to spend money in in paper advertisements you need to put up a tvc you know tv ad whatever required according to the need of the particular brand 
Now, one classical example that we can see today is Baijus. Now, if you look at Baijus as a, uh, it's a very small company, started with by, by, by Baiju himself at a, at a, as a very small brand. But today, if you see the papers in Times of India you, or any paper, you'll find him with a, a full page ad. That's basically building a brand. Today, Baijus is giving free, uh, you know, app for people to download students to be part of the education system. Now, look at the competitors. They cannot afford to get to that stage because they have gone public in the right time. So if your brand needs to be, uh, you know, building up, you need a lot of money to build a brand. So therefore, you could also consider going to public provided you have en enough of brand with to do that. Now, you also need to have, you know, build royal customers. You need to build loyal customers for yourself. Now, quickly, because uh, of uh, this is about building a brand. If you have any questions, I will be happy if you could put it in the chat so that we can talk about it. I'm just going to run through the next, uh, next uh, 15 minutes on how do you buy the franchise. Now, I talked about building a brand. Now, most of you are business me businessmen and you would have taken note of what I have said, but now I'm going to talk to people who want to become franchisees, who want to look at a small business that they want to start, maybe after COVID or maybe after some time. The first thing that you need to have is to become an entrepreneur. You need to have a passion to become an entrepreneur. Now, because others are doing business, I also want to do business. That's not a passion. So let me give you some story that you'll understand. When I worked in Green Trends, there were so many IT professionals who came to take up, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, salon business. One because their wives did not have a job and they were they were wanting to do something because they love beauty, so uh, they thought they could invest. The second uh, the second reason that I saw was. All of them have a car, have a house, and what can they do with the second, uh, you know, they could also buy a second home. Instead of buying a second home, they could invest into a business. And they felt that beauty industry is a very good business to be in. So when I worked there, I found so many IT people investing into the business, but they did not have the passion for business. They were so involved in IT. Only... Uh, but as we moved along, we found that it was very difficult for these IT men to do business in the beauty space because they found that this needs a different skill sets and they need to have passion. So just because my friend has invested into, into beauty business, therefore I need to invest is not a good concept. What I'm trying to say is you need to have a passion. Some of you might be interested in automobile. So if you're going to invest in automobile, you will really love it. Some of you are interested in, in food and, uh, uh, you know, food industry. You may do very well. So you need to have a passion for an industry and want to become an entrepreneur. You need to choose the right industry that you want to become. Where, which industry is that was doing well now? You need to do a research and find out which industry is doing well. And based on that industry, you can choose and you can pick that industry to be invested. Now, what is the viability of the business model? When the franchisor is you know, showing you certain models, how is the model, uh, is there a viability of the model? Some of them say, yeah, it is possible to make you know, ROI in just six months. You just invest, sir, we will take care of you. Don't worry, you just put a board outside and sit down. It, it's not going to work like that. You need to really go into details and find out what is the viability of the business model. How long can this industry survive? Now, one of the things that I've seen is you need to look at a long stand, standing industry. For example, healthcare is a very long standing industry. Now, the, the right time for India is to, and entrepreneurs is to invest into healthcare now. You find that COVID-19 has given a different dimensions for, uh, for businesses in the in the medical space. So I personally feel that the next industry could be the, um, could be the uh, uh, medical industry that would do well. So you could invest uh, by, by manufacturing some items or maybe you could import some of them 
into India and you look at a franchising model. Now, anything to do with food, anything to do with you know healthcare, anything to do with medicines, anything to do with uh, you know clothing, these are some of the things that you could look at. And also construction and also infrastructure building is the next uh, industry that you could look at. Now, how do we do all these things is something which we need to look at. So look at long term, which will industry will survive. There are some industries, for example, um, you know, a mobile industry. A mobile industry is gone now. You know, a mobile repair industry was something which is doing well some time back. But today, nobody is investing into a mobile uh, you know, uh, repair industry because the cheap mobiles have become very cheap. So there is something called investing in the right time and exiting out of the business at the right time. And I'm not sure that refurbishing phones, how much it will sell, what's going to happen to that industry. So we need to look at what industry survives for a long time and where can I invest my money as a franchise? That's very important. Before we get into buying a franchise, you need to look at the number of players in that industry. If there are so much of crowd, there's so many people inside that crowd, and there's no point in being part of that uh, industry. Now, when you start something, you need to start early. And you need to look at the number one company, number two company, number three company, maximum you can go to number four company. Now, for example, you see the best industry example that I could take is like, for example, if you already have a naturals in a particular location, the second uh, next you could look at is green trends. Now, for example, if you have a green trends in a particular location already established, you could look at a naturals in that location. Now, uh, that's that's the kind of identity that I'm talking about. You need to find out who is the best player in that industry and how can I become that franchise if it is not worthwhile investing in a brand which is not popular. I don't think you need to put your money. And I know many people have burned their fingers by saying the franchise fee is low, the brand is, uh, you know, just upcoming. So let me put my money into that business. I tell you, you might burn your finger. So therefore, I feel personally that you need to look at brands. I don't want any of you, my friends, to waste your money in a, in a brand which is not very popular. Be wise before you invest. Look at the company and the franchisor profile. For example, uh, you know, you need to look at what kind of a company it is, how long it exists. What is the profile of the franchisor? For example, there will be, uh, there will be people who have, you know, loans taken so many loans taken, but they have not paid back to the, you know, bank and they still have a, you know, kind of a brand that is running. And when is, what is the ethics that they follow? All this has to be looked at. Now, what is the vision? What is the mission, values, and ethos of the franchisor? It's very important to understand, uh, you know, do they really have a vision? What kind of mission? So we need to look at all these things. And when you go to buy the franchise, it's important to see if you could meet the MD of the company personally. It's very difficult. Uh, large brands would not allow you to meet the vision, but at least uh, to, to, to meet the MDs. But I want to tell you one particular brand that I really like is Raymond's. It's been there for ages in India. But if you look at their ethos, you know, the father would have started that business. And then, the, you know, the second generation takes over the same business. The third generation takes over the business. Why do people uh, work with such companies? So that's something which we need to look at. You also have to look at the financial stability of the franchisor. Now, what is, you know, some of them don't even have, I know companies which have, fran which have come to franchise shows where they don't even have one store, but they want to franchise. I remember a lady who came all the way from Bangalore to showcase her, her business model in Delhi. And I went and asked her, hey, how did you do this? I mean, do you, how many stores do you have? Uh, she's saying, I'm going to start my business, but I thought I will, I will find, uh, you know, uh, partners who could invest into my business and, you know, start my uh, franchise business. That's not the right way to do it. 
imagine if people have trusted her and put her money they would have actually gone bankrupt so that's very important for us to see the stability of the franchise do what kind of you know you could even ask them can you show me your pnl account are you doing well before you franchise these are tough questions i remember helping one of my friends who want to buy a franchise with one particular company and i kept him i kept giving him the uh, details that i had to give him he went and asked these tough questions to the manager and the manager was not able to answer these questions he made it very tough for the manager and the manager would come back saying that i will i will answer these questions the next two days now sometimes it's important for us to ask tough questions before we put our money very important actually you also have to look at the legal requirements now as i told you earlier there is no franchise law in india there is no specific franchise law the contract law the contract act 1872 and the specific relief act of 1963 is what is still followed so it will be a contractual obligation that we will be writing to each other so sometimes it's very, it's not sometimes it's good to read the uh, 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 legal agreement given by every franchise or and raise questions instead of just signing the agreement ultimately if you want the brand you got to sign it because the franchise or will say well this is what been signed by all the 100 franchises so the you need to sign this but the good thing is if you can document and find out each one each of this clauses what it means for you so that you are aware of these uh, law these these uh, do, these contractual obligation that are mentioned so that it becomes clear for you before you enter a business that you are liable for certain things that you have to do for example you are you are asked to attend regularly attend meetings and if you after joining the franchise system you are not attending uh, attending the meetings the franchise or can send, send you a legal notice and say you are not been attending now maybe you are supposed to give uh, royalties to people uh, to the company and you are awaiting the royalty the company can send a, a legal notice to you so Uh, maybe the company has given given you 45 days credit period and you are paying it only on the 90th day they could send you a legal uh, notice so these are some of the things that we need to look at before we enter into uh, an agreement with the company these are very important things now as i told you earlier we also should look at how often do they bring out new products many companies fail to bring new products they wouldn't even think of an r&d department you should ask do you have a product innovation department or an r&d department which constantly brings new products to the market when was the last time that you brought a new product for example let me give you the industry uh, like um, the uh, hair salon industry or the beauty industry now every summer there's a summer cut which comes out and this is i know since i was in the uh, uh, in the uh, space of uh, beauty there are people who come from uh, uk to train our uh, stylist by bringing in new cuts now this is very important because for a new season so for example when summer comes uh, we know we when we bring in new facials now when winter comes there will be some new facials so these are important things for us to understand that the companies which come out with these products are companies that you could associate with you need to ask this hard questions before you sign up with any franchise or what is the kind of support system do they have what kind of people process and procedures do they follow we need to ask do you have a manager for this you have a process for this you have a procedure for this it's very important to ask these three p's to them what is the, at the end you should ask what is the profitability of the business that i get i invest let's say i invest 40 lakhs i invest 50 lakhs 
when do I make money? That's very important to ask that question. The before you sign up, check with the existing franchises. If some of them have taken a franchise of a particular brand, visit the store, find out how the business is happening. But sometimes, you know, the existing franchise will not share the truth because he will be scared whether they will put up another store next to my own store. So be very wise to understand the information is correct or wrong. So you need to do some due diligence to find out that uh, that data. It's very important before you sign up with another, uh, you know, with, with a franchise to check with the other franchise before you take up a franchise business. Now, it's also good to also find out, uh, you know, take some feedbacks about the products. For example, you can talk to some customers who are already part of the brand. You know, you might find some people who are regular customers of this brand and you can talk to them and find out, hey, what do you think about this brand? Do you think it's a good brand? So you need to look at, you know, taking your feedback to the end customer also. That's a very important thing. Now, once you have done all these due diligence, don't waste your time. Just decide and sign up. Don't have any two thoughts about it. Just say, well, I need to do it and I'm going for it. But if you're not decided, don't invest. Pull back your investments. It's better. Like, for example, let's say I always say a franchise uh, a, a franchise or franchisee relation, relationship is like a marital relationship. Before you have engaged, you have you're, you're signed on a dotted line, you can, you can think of many things. But once you have decided and you have signed the dotted line, you need to move forward. So it's, it's like a marital relationship. A franchise or franchisee uh, relationship is like a marital relationship. You need to trust each other. And you need to say, well, I'm going to be with you. I know a particular brand. The first franchise is still there in the system today. It is about 30 years now. This year, May will be the 30th year. But they started you to do business in the same location. And he has taken multiple businesses for uh, multiple businesses of the same brand. And that shows that the franchisor and franchisee has a great relationship and there is profitability in that business. So if you're taking a decision, just sign up. So these are my contact details. And if you want to uh, get in touch with me, you're free to get in touch with me between 10 and five o'clock. 10 o'clock and five o'clock, I'll be available. And you can ask me for any details that I will be able to share with you and encourage you to take this business to, if you have business to be franchised, I'll be very happy to help you and uh, please get in touch with me. Thank you so much, Chaco, uh, for such a lovely session and your valuable insight in regards with how to franchise, how to choose a franchise, and uh, how to uh, look forward in terms of establishing a franchise model. So I would encourage all the participants to post your questions. Uh, however, we do not have much time. We we'll have only 10 minutes. So we'll try our best to take uh, as many questions as possible. The other questions, we'll be uh, posting it to brother Mr. Chaco and he will answer it whenever he's free. So the first question uh, would be, uh, sir, how, uh, hello, sir, what will be my territory uh, and how will uh, it be protected? Is it that we should focus on tier two or tier three cities to avoid competition in urban cities? Uh, see, the territory is defined by the franchise, the franchise or. Okay. Okay. The, okay. The, the territory is uh, actually decided by the uh, franchisor. Now, some franchisor give a territory. See, in the you know, let me tell you how it works in the franchising system. Initially, they will uh, generally they will say, uh, "Don't worry, uh, we are starting, so you know you are the first one, so it's okay. You can work all over the place." But as the as the system moves on, a number of people have started taking. Um, you know, uh, taking note of this brand and the need for that particular industry, you will find some, you know, you know, you will find that the territory will become smaller. So it is good to have 
uh, you could you could write an uh, you, if you are fortunate enough you could get your agreement signed in the initial stages of itself because many franchisors will be actually looking to you know just franchise and take the money and see at least let me give my first franchise that freedom so we need to be uh, we need to understand that and say okay what that's a good question that you asked because uh, it's very important to define your territory unless you define your territory you can't do business in that uh, space thank you it does it answer my your question yes, yes hopefully sir so next question would be uh, how to select team members uh, for the franchise model uh it's like selecting any other it's like selecting any other team uh, you know members for your team but uh, but today in the market you will find people who have already worked in the in the uh, franchise space so you need to uh, you know uh, pick up people who have already had some experience so that they don't have to be uh, taught your system i mean they don't have to be uh, uh, you know trained so you get some ready made uh, people who have worked in the market and then you can you know uh, uh, put up your uh, uh, you know pick up your best team understood sir uh, the next question is a little longer i hope uh, i can do this just to it uh, i am uh, mohammed shamir we are into two different verticals one pharmaceutical manufacturing and marketing other is pet products import manufacturing distribution and e-commerce we are planning to enter into franchising our business for healthcare and pet products I have reached Franchise India for the support they studied and have given me a plan where the professional fees for setting up, acquiring leads, and marketing fees are very high. Where we could not understand the fee structure, I have the following questions: What are the basic costs involved in franchising my business, statu uh, statutory and everything? And these must uh, uh, and these must uh, and these much high costs involved in franchising industry can only re the second question is can only retail model be franchised? we have two wholesale distribution verticals can i franchise the wholesale business model pretty long uh, <laughs> questions i think we we can uh, we can uh, you know talk about it a little later my number is there we could uh, we could you could take my number from jubran and we could sit and talk but let me uh, see it all depends on which company that you want to hire uh, uh, franchise india is one of the leading companies in the franchising space uh they have done some fantastic work uh but it's your choice uh whom you want to appoint you know uh, i cannot say uh, what is the price because each company charges a different price and um, uh you could also you know hire a, a ceo or a or a or a brand manager uh, who has experience in this and then you can do your models that is one way or uh, you could hire a company like franchise india which is expensive that you have mentioned that but you could also talk to them and see how they could help you you know uh, there's nothing wrong in that the next question is uh, what are the franchising expos other than organized uh, franchise expos other uh, than what are organized by franchise india what books do you suggest to read about the franchising business Uh, and can we contact you for consulting to make our business model and franchising a business i think uh, jubran is the right person <laughs> to contact and we can work together uh, i'll be very happy to uh, jubran and i go a long way uh, we have seen each other for many years and and you know uh, and he has a uh, he, he has a lot of passion to help the community basically so i would uh, be happy to do that with along with them and take this uh, discussion forward uh, you know there are so many books in the market uh, there are pretty expensive ones so you can pick up something on google you find all these books and uh, basically i have done my phd in franchise management and i have searched all these books and i have about 28 years experience in working with brands that's my experience that i can give it to people who are willing to look at this uh, you know uh, going into franchising especially i saw some comments on you know lassi cream businesses and um, i also see some uh, you know the manufacturing of uh, uh, manufacturing of um, uh, medical i mean uh, medical equipments products so that's something which uh, which which are which are all good uh, good items to be done so i think you guys have a good uh, uh, good product lines to be franchised 
thank you for your kind so anything in regards to franchise uh, exhibitions which he had asked yeah see the exhibition there are few companies which are doing this but i uh, the the footfall would always be franchise india okay okay the is footfall that comes into uh, into uh, the is footfall that you can expect for a expo would be franchise india because they are they are the pioneers in this field of franchise uh, franchising and they have done a great job in developing franchise uh, models and you know they have helped a lot of people to franchise so uh, but there are other uh, small uh, you know uh, events that happens in chennai in bangalore there are few companies i can't you know very hardly one or two that i can think of but the most uh, the biggest shows are all franchise india shows and they are they have the uh, they have the uh, wonderful way of doing this very posh very uh, uh, you know very good way of doing things okay that's good sir i'll be taking two or three more questions uh, one would be how could i uh, use my business i'm doing cctv camera business give me any idea uh we can we uh, talk about this offline is it okay okay sir so we can See, because if you are buying and okay let me answer this i know it's not right for me to not uh, see for example if you are buying and selling i think that can be done by anybody but if you are manufacturing and then you want to set up stores that's the best way to do it but if you are going to you know buy from somewhere why should they do it they can also buy from somewhere oems and then put their names and then sell it off so we need to be unique in our business model and this was the question or would be uh, just a second yeah we are farmers group produce certified and non certified organic products so far we are not in to retail we are planning to go uh, franchising network near future what are the basic things need to start now uh nizar i have already shared the, those things in the presentation i think you will have a clear uh, this thing if you want you can uh, get in touch with me i have shared my number a little earlier and also jibran is there you could always talk to jibran and we can uh, we can meet up and talk about it it's a good good thing to do because you could do a small store uh, and see i i know a lot of organic uh, organic companies which are there uh, for example organic india is one because these are all products sourced from somewhere but branded and sold so you know but you are a, you are sourcing yourself so you could easily brand your own uh, you know brand and build up your own organic brand hello intending to lease the rental agreement with the store slash building owner uh i didn't get that does uh, does the franchisor or the franchisee enter into a business or lease agreement uh, when the uh, building owner should they uh, should it be a tri party agreement is what is asking basically oh, fantastic question very good question uh, see it all depends on the model that you want to see the tri party agreement actually helps the franchisor to hold control of the of the location if the franchisee is uh, leaving the business but however the franchisee should be capable of acquiring that business now if you are not going to acquire the business and you don't know you don't have that much of cash then probably a tie party agreement is fine but then if the franchisee decides to leave you uh, he might have another brand uh, you know put up on the uh, on the front of his uh, of a store so that's the challenge so we need to decide okay uh, worst come worst i can buy it. so i know a particular company uh, which only does tri party because they have the money they have the uh, capacity to buy a franchise even under of them leave they can buy that franchise just like that so it's it, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a uh, it's a decision that the business model can take 
Okay, sir. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, quest- answers to the valuable questions which were posted by uh, so many of our participants. Uh, I would like to thank you for your participation today and for uh, giving us your time and to be available with us for this session. And I'd like to thank all the participants. Uh, I'm sure a lot of participants are excited. Anyone who would like to contact uh, Dr. Chako, you can always get in touch with the Class IS Academy team or get in touch with me as well, which is more or less the same. And we will try to help you in best in terms of to get, with, uh, get in touch with uh, Mr. Chako. And uh, I would like to thank all the participants once again. Uh, looking forward uh, to have you on our session tomorrow as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Chako. Uh, pleasure thank you. Thank you very much and really appreciate you for inviting me. And I wish you all the very best. Uh, if you really want to franchise your business, get in touch with uh, Gibran and we can do. We can come around and uh, do this. I'm, I'm really happy to work with you all because you guys are real businessmen. And you have great products in your in your mind. Say, I see some generic med- medical store. It's a great model. It's it's very important to. Uh, it's it's a good good thing to do because today uh, that's another place to be in. So uh, I hope all your ideas could be captured and we could you know we could work as a team to build this uh, ecosystem for your community itself. God bless and thank you so much for your opportunity that you gave me to uh, speak in this forum. Thank you, Gibran.